This is how to make a supernova and this is part 2 of the Star Wars Scarif Diorama. Welcome at part 2 of the Scarif Diorama. If you didn't see part 1 yet, I suggest you go watch that first and then come back here to this video. Um, in this video we're going to finish the whole project, so let's go. The first step is to make a simple cardboard box. This box will be the base to work from. The box itself won't be visible, so I won't worry about wrinkles. With some hot glue I put the box together. I add some pieces in the corner for some extra strength. The next step is to cover the box with EVA foam to get a very smooth look. I put the cardboard box on the foam and draw lines where I need to cut the foam. To add some details I'm going to give it a second layer of foam. When this detail part was done, I made sure it was exactly in the middle. With a pen, I marked the places where I need to put the glue. First I did the top, then I did the sides. When I was gluing the sides in place, I noticed this piece was just a little short by 1mm. Next time I would make it a bit longer, glue it in place and cut off the excess. To cover the seams I add some extra strips of EVA foam. Before painting I check how the box compares to a shore trooper. From 1mm EVA foam I am making a button panel. I am planning to add some LEDs inside the box to light up some buttons. All the buttons who should light up are cut out. I placed the button panel on the box and made sure it was in the middle. With a pen I marked where I needed to place the LEDs. To add more details I glued small pieces of foam on the panel. With my airbrush I painted everything black. To hide the LEDs I took a clear piece of plastic and glued it behind the button panel. This plastic will later be painted.
For the first layer of paint, I am mixing up a dark grey. I cover most of the box with my dark grey paint. I make sure some of the black and recesses is still visible. The grey paint is dry and right now I'm going to age it a little. Um, I'm using black paint and a sponge to do some chipping on it. So I'm holding the sponge, put some paint on it, then remove most of it. And then on the areas who would be most damaged, I gently tap the sponge. When all the edges are chipped, I use some silver paint to paint these chips. This will give the effect that the protective layer is gone and you can see the bare metal. I painted the inside of the buttons, so when I put an LED in it, the buttons will light up. From the back side of the box, I cut a hole for the LED switch. I'm using a 9 volt battery to power the LEDs. With some cardboard, I make a holder to keep the battery and the LEDs in place. Um, I wanted to add a little more detail right here, so uh, I cut another piece of foam and I'm going to glue it right here and then paint it black. Here I listen to myself. I made the foam a bit longer and cut off the excess. Uh, this thing is still drying so I'm going to paint these two parts. I made a dark grey and I'm going to use a heavy dry brush on uh, this part. Every part, get, every part gets painted. And the parts that are higher are going to get a second coat of paint because they uh, catch more light. So I'm also painting this part. Uh, as you can see, it is just a flat uh, surface. This part will almost be um, impossible to see, so I'm just putting some gray on it. And that will be fine. This part is still drying, so um, I'm going to move further on this, uh, this part. What I'm going to do is use a lighter color gray, wipe most of it off, and then give a very light uh, dry brush on these parts. So I only use the light dry brush with the light grey paint on the raised areas, so we get a little more uh, contrast. This part is dry and now I'm going to repeat the same process.
I'm going to check the layout. Um, I'm going to mark on this piece of food where I want all the action figures and the box and stuff. So I can get an idea uh, what I still need to do. I think this will be the layout I will um, be going for. Um, I left here some space, so I have some um, space left for trees, grass and stuff like that, because it's on Scarif, so there will be uh, a jungle and a lot of plants. First I was thinking of making this box orange, um, because in the movie there are also these uh, orange boxes who carry kyber crystals. But then uh, when this was orange, with this orange background of the bunker, it would be pff, one blob of orange. So uh, I think um, making this box dark grey was a very good choice. This is the cabinet where the diorama will be stored. But to put the thing in there, I need to make it modular. On the left and the right side I have these bars. When I would glue everything together it would be impossible to get it in. To make it modular, keep it in place and prevent it from moving, I am adding magnets. First I drill a hole where the magnets will be, then I glue the magnets in place. Then I added some PVA glue and added the sand. Right now I am sprinkling sand on the orange part. I was thinking that on Scarif the wind blows the beach sand everywhere, so I am adding some on the ledges. To keep it in place I first use some soapy water and then watered down PVA glue. It looks like it is messing up the orange paint, but it will dry up just fine. I put another coat of sand on the bottom and right now it's dry. Um, this is the project so far and now I'm going to add some leaves and bushes to get that jungle feeling. First I'm adding some flock and static grass. Then I sprayed some soapy water on it and watered down PVA glue. This is the end of the Scarab Diorama. If you like my videos, please like and subscribe because it really helps my channel grow. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section uh, below and I will be back to you. Thank you for watching, spread the happiness and i see you next time. The higher parts, um, they're going to get an extra layer because... because?